Oh, we are live. Okay. Nobody's supposed to be talking when this yeah, is out. You say that every week, and we ignore you every week. And there's no intro again. Or is it the intro? Uh, that intro's intense. Oh, we're here. It's like an MA song. It is the real deal, Holyfield. I think we paid 200 bucks for that. No, me and Wes made it for free. What are you talking about? Did we pay Wes? I paid somehow. I just want to show everybody my beer to start because this week, show length is going to be, I think I know where the camera is, two beers long. <laughs> That's how I time. Jeff goes like, oh, it's been on 45 minutes, but I just go by it. Last week was a little short. I only had one beer. I don't know if anybody noticed. Is that why we ended it early? Because you yeah, ran out of beer. Or I had a soda. I don't remember what it was, but it was yeah. definitely part of the reason. How do Jeff, we make it so when I'm talking to my mother? We got to wrap this up. We're done already? No, I said Jeff's always like, welcome to the show. We got to wrap this up, guys. Yeah. Yeah, well, right. So for everybody that's uh, just looking at our ugly faces for the first time, we're three dudes that babble about RC. That's why we call it RC Babble, which I'm, doesn't say it anywhere now, but uh, it says it somewhere. <laughs> Let's have a discussion. We should add RC Babble to the thumbnail, Pete. I, yeah, I am Derek. I'm the, uh, some guy that does Velocity RC Cars magazine, like the hat. I don't just make a hat. We make a magazine, download it today on your smart or not so smart tablet, depending on how smart you are. Jeff lives in Canada. He wears a winter hat 24-7. Pete is in Texas, and he's rocking the hat. Although this one, I'll be honest with you, is a little tight on my head, and it starts to cut my brain off uh, after about 30 minutes of use. It is a little tight, but yeah. I only wear it for this video. So, Yeah, I wear it more often. Got to keep it fresh. That's the only reason. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So, Jeff, he just found a hat. And swells yeah. in Canada. It's never I shut down. I don't know which way to point it. It's over there somewhere. Yeah, anyway. Elements. It's another company. I, I don't know if he's going to bring back. Uh, what's that shitty shirt with the, the dazzle on there? When the old white bikers wore, they were like sixty, looking cool. Had I have no idea. What you're on their pockets, Jeff Hardy or something like that. Oh yeah, there's another one too. What's that MMA one that everyone Hardy. wears? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeff is going to no, start no. rocking those next week because they're now in style in Canada. Uh, for everyone interested, I have ordered a new hat for next week. <laughs> not for me because the mine was too, the one I sent is too expensive to for you to wear. Yeah, yeah, no, I got it on display. I'll, it's right there, I, right beside the ugly scar. Hey, what, what's up, uh, T Bo? What's up, Omar? Right I'm pretending you're a ventriloquist dummy. What's that, Pete? I'm pretending you're a ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> you got your hand in my ass. <laughs> what's going on, Jeff? <laughs> Just affliction. See. Freaking Tebow, man! This guy, it's yeah, a good, good thing this guy's a fan because he think knows he it. Is, I think he's your neighbor. He knows you're a striker and you're a I pay him every week to yeah, interact with him. I really wish you had your. I know that I make this joke every week, but you did have Oakley pants with the O was perfectly in your butthole. I'll go get them if you want. And he wore them at every trade show every year for. That 10. sounds like something I would do. Yeah. So this is how we start, uh, start uh, every show talking about Jeff's O-ring, but um, we got some. We got a plan today. We are giving away stuff. Uh, we are going to give away something that I don't even know what it is, but it's made by Teakin. Teakin related. Yes. Hey. So Hold in on. a way, today's show is brought to you by Teakin only because they're giving away something that we 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 don't know. It could be that at RX-8. It could be for your crawler. Maybe we can get him to give away something new that he told me about that I can't talk about. I'm in uh, quarantine, or what's that called? Uh, embargo. Ah, embargo. Trade embargo. That word. So I can't tell you what it is, but there's a couple things coming out. Exciting. Uh, if people don't know, Tekin is a U.S. company. If that matters to you, it should. If you live here, if you don't live here, Maybe you should. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no. Not right now. Why? Anyways, right. The country's so, doing great. Right now. Now. Everything's going real well in the U.S. right now. That's great. We got That's one great. word answer guy here. Would you, do you like Tekken? Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm a huge Tekken fan. I've been a Tekken fan uh, even before they were an advertiser. Tekken I, mean, I have to be a Tekken fan now, but I was before as well. 
I, I can tell you why I'm a Tekken fan. It was the first Speed Control I bought. Yep. That was the first one I had after the Futaba MC 210 TV that came with a radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shitty. My, that, that's a speed control I drove with one speed uh, because, you know, when you used to be able to hook up batteries back or some, I burnt out all the speeds. So I had an electronic speed control with just full throttle, but it was still better than the swipe around my RC10. So that's, uh, sure. that's, that's how rough we have it. You know, I'm a poor boy. I had broken materials. And I stole a lot. Some of stuff. people still drive like an on-off switch, where it's either yeah, zero. you don't really need it. It's nitro. <laughs> uh, I don't think anything interesting came out in RC. I, and sometimes we like to discuss when something new came out. Uh, we we'll get some new camo paint. camo camo paint mask from Triple X Main. I've been keeping a close eye on this one. They did a great job on it. Triple X Main dot com. Camouflage paint mask. How are sales? They're great. Things are going great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Reedy has a new fan, guys. So that's cool. Um, <laughs> Jake has buggy body. X Ray has a new GT uh, on road car, eight scale buggy for the street, basically. Oh, you know what I saw? I don't know if this is new, but I think I think Jason, I think Jay Concepts uh, released a B2 body. Is that yeah. true? we're in the golden age right now? That's great. Yeah, they have an no, like, like, B2 authentic. I don't want to start rumors, but does that mean something? Like, is Associate about to release a re release of that or something? Or, like, why all of a sudden would. Bruce car they've ever made i hope so no i'm just i'm just curious I, I i don't even know is that a brand new body that jason just released and if so why why now i like it it's awesome but oh they make yeah. everybody makes some weird stuff so uh joe who paints for us uh always bragging about his rc10 gt electric conversion <laughs> which i'm just so baffled by that was even a product for some reason <laughs> I don't know why i don't get it can, why it wasn't a product? Why it was? There was a conversion to convert your GT to electric. Oh, Joe didn't make it himself. He he no, bought a conversion. That was a, that was like a class for uh, I don't know, like a like a twelve minutes or something. Because like, like people realize, hey, they make an electric car that's better. I don't understand why you would ch take the nitro yeah. out. Well, they also have uh, buggy two uh, two wheel drive buggies now that have a mid motor with a drive shaft going to the rear gearbox. Unless those went out of favor, but that was a thing for a little bit, wasn't it? But that would be for a different reason. That would be for weight bias. Like, or, uh, probably some kind of a weight distribution reason. I mean, in, in RC, you know how it goes. If, if someone does something different, unless it is clearly observable to suck, they'll say it's better that way. Like, dude, are you running your front tires on the back? It's it's the hookup, you know, or some bananas thing, you know. Um, that's just I, how I, 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 I would agree with that. It may be in the basher or the less informed racer market. But, but uh, I mean, the bad ideas are hashed out real quick on the racetrack. Okay. So I, now, even in the race era, though, when it was more of the anything goes racing era, as opposed to now, where so stuff is so sure. super fine. But you know, back yeah. in the RC10 GT era, for sure, there were every time anytime a new car would come out, there'd be guys. You got to flip the arms, put the right arms on the left, and vice yeah. versa. It's, it's it's way better. Yeah, you know, sure. Need to try it. Would suck, but there, there would always be someone doing that kind of stuff. I know, but well, the, right came now. after <laughs> GT came after the electric one. It doesn't. It didn't make any sense to me. But the, it was a thing because Joe posts pictures that he wants to start a class with people that. One to spend two hundred dollars on a conversion to make it electric, which is yeah. the same price. You know, um, open vehicle is very difficult to get to begin with. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about uh, real quick, if you want to, is that uh, Praxis is offering the slash as a two-wheel drive kit, and I responded to some guys who are like, you know, why does it come with electronics? That's stupid. The whole point is you can choose your own electronics. And I think for a lot of people today buying a kit, um, at least a, a, a slash or that genre, as opposed to a TRX4 kit where you probably don't want electronics because on the trail side, most people do want to choose their own stuff. But I think for a lot of customers, and maybe you can speak to this, Jeff, if you say, here's a kit to build your own radio control car, they're probably going to think everything's in the box. They're not because a radio control car has a radio. They're not going to think like, oh, yeah, it wouldn't have that in the box. I'll have to pick that out and I'll have to go through everything I need to learn about radios and servos and speed controls and motors to get that stuff. I think a lot of people are like, yeah, of course it would be in the box. Why would it not I, I think be maybe, no. maybe from Traxxas they might have that impression, but but I mean most of the kits that are available these days are race kits which don't come with electronics. So I, I mean I I don't know if if it, it, I don't really know. You look at disappointment in my face from that answer. What did you listen to anything Pete said? <laughs> he, he, I think I thought it, I thought I did. No, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if it gets tra you got the Google Translate on and the on the app somehow. <laughs> like, did I just miss that? Language. All right, start again. What are you asking? Right? asking? Well, there, there are plenty of old guys like us who understand that, yeah, the whole deal with a kit is you get to build it yourself, which is fun, but you also get to choose your own electronics, which is so important. 
I'll but translate I mean, to pay more. Yeah, but for, but now nowadays there's a lot of people. Um, one, the idea that you can buy a truck unassembled at all is like, what? Why would I want that? But if they do want it, if they're like, oh, I, I can build it myself, that sounds cool. That would be a great project for me and my son, or uh, you know, that kind of thing. They'll probably also assume because they've found out that you can buy an RC car un, unassembled for the first time. They'll probably assume everything you need is in the box including a radio and a, the parts that make it go. The idea that like, no, 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 this doesn't have the parts that make it go. And you're going to spend another 200 bucks to get that stuff. That would really blow their minds. I thought I responded to that. Yeah, I said for well, attraction. Did brand, That's I, I didn't say you didn't hear him. I just said you're stupid. And I, I think for attraction brand, brand, yes, you would expect the, the electronics to be in there. But the, the kit world, as it is since you know the last 20 years, a lot of the kits these days don't uh, because so many of the kits are race cars that, that the industry might yeah, expect. Well, it not it's it's a different kind of kit. Yeah, yeah. No, I, well, I, again, I, I, the first thing I said is the Traxxas brand, yeah, I think people would expect the, the well, electronics. Not, not the brand. It depends on the model. I mean, clearly Traxxas does not have a philosophy of our kits will all include all the electronics because the TRX4 sport kit does not. And a trail right. truck buyer, those guys are all about like, a big part of this is how I set up my electronic gear. So it makes sense that that one wouldn't. So I think Trax is just listening to the marketplace, but the idea that kits are for old guys like us exclusively, not necessarily true. And um, I'm sure, you know, Trax has probably done more research and actual thought into it with oh, yeah. data as opposed to something. Also, why don't they just offer both? Why don't they uh, have a kit with they electronics do. and a kit? They do. Well, no, they, not for that one. Um, yeah. The still beat four by four was offered both ways. And now they only offer it, um, I think with electronics. Um, because uh, presumably the one that did not have electronics was not as good yeah, a seller. And you, and you, you've already spoken to this. Traxxas is so big that, that, that they can make a lot of decisions based strictly on the numbers. If, if something isn't selling, then, then they'll stop selling it. Yeah. Uh, and probably I, not, not attempt I it again. I think a uh, kid's going to sell more than the ready to run, to be honest with you. I think they oh, kind of course it won't. No, it but there are still good. people that want it. Sounds like yeah, I think they, they said there's enough people here where we can do a run to satisfy that need and it'll be profitable and yeah. it's worth doing. Um, yeah. And that's that's fine. I, I think it's noteworthy. And I, I think it's very uh, heartening to hear that there are still kids or dads who are making their kids uh, build a kit because, you know, we all know the amazing building kit. And I love the idea of ready to runs of not having this gatekeeping in the hobby where all you have to do to get into hobby quality radio control is want to. Um, but I do like that. If you want to build a kit, there is an option and there's no one with a kit half built under the bed never joining the hobby because that's the only way to do it and they couldn't get past that hurdle. I'm no, glad no, you, got, you want to have both, but but we, but we we get flooded with customers all the time with their slash coming in, breaking the most common part, the front knuckle or whatever, which is two screws and a wheel nut and a, and a drive pin kind of a thing. And they can't change it. They, they, they're asking us to do the, the swap for them. So that's a little frustrating in the hobby that it's so, it's so easy now to get in that. People I, I will not. not bothering, but, I'm going to knock most ready to runs because they went from instruction manuals to owner's manual and yes. the Traxxas kit does not show you how to take anything apart. That's so, true. Well, exploded views, but you're right. No, they don't have step-by-step -step and they yeah, should. But I mean, at least in the old days, I mean, if you included that step-by-step, -step, you would have the, okay, I have to do it backwards. But most kits now ready to run and that's really everybody. I'm not singling out Traxxas. You you're going to make Pete but, mad. Yeah. Uh, there's no more manual. It's basically turn your car on, you know, uh, uh, pair, change your speed control, or uh, maybe like some mild information, but it's not really a breakdown. So if they were being smart, you need a real manual. And, and a, it's not a manual anymore. It's, a, or it's, it's not instructions. It's a driver's manual. It's like getting your real car. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure those brands would say we'd love to, but that stuff's not free. And the additional cost isn't value perceived by the by the buyer and we have to do it in four languages and now it becomes a big they'd have they'd have reasons it's not just because yeah. like oh, we, we said screw you but for sure I, you know it, it'd be nice to have it there in paper form but at least you can get it online i know tracks is right on the front of, of the manual it says go online for the whole manual and the whole manual is very comprehensive and they have exploded views where you can actually click on the part that shows all that stuff um but yeah that'd be nicer but i do like the slash kit uh, only because that was still one of my favorite racing classes and I'd prefer to build it than... Yeah, I have it, by the way. We can put that into the next issue, so... I know. I was told. Yeah. Bastard. Um, yeah. So before I hit enter, which I'm going to do right now, I'm going to put the link back up. It's the same link as last week, so if you already downloaded this issue, you just got to do it again to try to win. Uh, we're just doing it to keep track of entries instead of us writing stuff down or dumb we came up with while we weren't thinking 
So well, for our awesome old, viewers, maybe next week we should even offer a I mean, we have like 40 issues. We can even offer a different issue each oh, week for, no. for our loyal viewers. Buy the issue. Well, there, there yeah. could be a way to make well, sure. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> there could it's be a way to watch 40 episodes and uh, everything we did was free. Uh, the idea is like, hey, you're going to win. Okay. Now we're oh, talking 40 episodes. For $10. Is every yeah. subscriber automatically entered, or do they have to do something every every episode? No, we're. Uh, this is the link that I put up there. is a specific link to right. Babel, and it's free. Yeah. Issue thirty six or thirty seven, right. I forget. You right. download it, and it basically just gives me a log of who entered. So that's right. how you're entering to win. Uh, I will change it. I just, to be honest with you, I didn't get home in time today to do it. And then uh, it doesn't really matter. Let's it's free issue right to now. enter to get something free. Just download it, and and if you like what you got for free, it's f and ten dollars, nine ninety nine for the PDF. If you do the app, it's more expensive, uh, and we make less money. I some other third party Apple programmer is fine, but uh, just do the app. It's a PDF. If you don't know how to use a PDF, just turn the computer off and walk into the street, and hopefully someone runs you over. But it's pretty easy to use, and uh, it's a two hundred dollar value, as they say. Yeah. It's more, yeah. yeah, right. Well, no. times five, you know, very charitably, it's a a four hundred dollar value. Um, you go I'm put the actual price on the magazine to like fifteen hundred dollars, so then I can say it's more, yeah. and still sell for two bucks, whatever the hell it is, two ninety nine, whatever. We don't even know what we sell the magazine for. I, I try to get a subscription. I mean, if you buy the single yeah, issue, yeah. Dumb, like five bucks an issue, it's priced. It's priced so dumb that if you buy one issue, I really like when I see people buy one issue. And if you did them, um, you can come here and I'll slap you in the face personally. It doesn't make any sense. It's so crazy to just subscribe and get everything and keep getting everything. But hey, if you want to pay more right. for one, yeah. all right, enough of this. What, is, what are we talking about here? <laughs> We're talking about lipos and life fees, right? No, we're still well, on. Well, okay. well, I don't. I don't even know about lipo, lipos to life ease, but there's also the uh, on Let's Did you start lipo. Let's start this. If oh, I you want to start with that one? I feel like this is a better direction. I kind of, unless I thought about this backwards and I flipped it in my head. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's fine. It doesn't. It doesn't. RC cars are now on all levels. Even Jeff's. I'm uh, in the A main, and all I care about is winning the A main. I don't. Want that, that's not true. Go fastest, I don't care, are too fast. So we can talk about your ready position? to run. Ready your to run. position is they are too fast? 100%. They're stupidly fast, uh, right. especially because they're ready to run and they go 70 miles an hour out of box. And well, eat, and then we're going to tie this in because it's two parts. It's definitely too fast for, and this is why I did this first and not the battery thing, the average consumer. And that's why we have to have electric nannies, but some cars don't have them. And racing which is too fast, which will tie into our next topic, is too fast, and especially on your dumb off-road carpet where unlimited traction ruins everything again. Yeah, well, touring car would be a better example than, than off-road carpet then in that case, but yeah, that's fine. Either one, whatever, whatever which one you want to pick, something on green fuzzy carpet? That well, goes I'll, I'll, I'll make my points after. If, if you, you, so you, you're, okay, are you done your diatribe that it's too fast? Or you, I assume you have more to say. Oh, I do. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, no, you want that? You want it now? I want it now, buddy. Okay. So we'll talk about racing specifically. And uh and well, when I started racing it was stock and modified. Modified was still pretty quick back in the day. You know, we ran like a I mean when I was younger, maybe a ten turn or something. Ooh, uh, crazy. It's not insane like it is now. Two things have changed, obviously. What one of them is gonna be our next topic, but battery power and motor power. But <laughs> In the modified high end, it you know uh, there was talk in the industry of racing being too fast, and they were coming up with to me dumb ways of slowing everything down. One of them was uh, do motor limit crap, which annoys the it baffles me, and I want to punch people in the face for this one. I actually got in a, an argument at the Ifmar Worlds when they had the ten turn motor limit. Yeah, it's remember when they had in uh, racing they had a ten, they had a motor limit on modified. I don't remember that at all, but I don't like it. Well, <laughs> we hundred percent agree. But uh, uh, Rick, I think, was in uh, Team Orion at the time. Howard uh, was adamant about this. You know, well, our motors are blowing up and blah blah blah, and this is slowing everything. I said, well, there's a simple solution, and this is what it is for the average consumer. 
if you can't make the main and last long enough, you have to turn your motor down so you win. Yeah, Don't you can't go right. fast to blow up and say it was fast for half the race. Yeah, but the I'm, I'm 100 yeah, cool. against spec stuff and open modified. It, it drives me insane. Even though of course. for some parts like tires are better for for equality. That's a different conversation. That's not, different I know, but we're not racing for equality. We're racing to win. So I don't. Yeah, get opens it. open. Open should be open. Right. You run if you got a better tire, and that's what wins. Everybody needs to run your tire. That was the point. That's the point of being a tire company or a motor. Well, no, company. I'm not against hand out tires and all that crap, but that's a whole other conversation. We can we could tangent on that for a long time. Uh, I think the I think tire conversation is different than the mo than an open motor conversation. But the here. motor stuff. So they, their idea was one to uh, limit the turns, uh, slow down motors. So for stock, which got too fast for whatever whoever decided. Uh, when the, we had timing and all that crap, crap was go to a what did they want to go to like twenty three turn uh, brushless, and and the opposite uh, was true. You know, back in the day with stock motors, it was capped at uh, maybe when I raced, I think it was twenty five bucks. But um, they wanted to make it uh, cost controlled again. But the more you wind brushless motors, the more expensive it is. So the slower the motor, the actually more expensive the product is. You know, it's yeah, more but, but stock isn't even a conversation. There's no, they're not insane speeds. I, th I think we're talking into the. No, but they the, still want the slower. The even car blows stock, up when it crashes, kind of speeds. Right. Even at stock, they said it was too fast for beginners. Sure. Right. I know, Jeff. Before we talk, that you're only the A main driver. That no, I'm not. I mean, anyway, that's be bothered with someone backing up in the traffic or going. I've given a number of arguments about the G main and, and how it's just as important as the A main. You're, you're grouped with your skill level and. And that's the system that we have, and it works very well. I'm not a snobby A main right. uh, elitist, but we can so talk about that if you like. If when we keep adding traction, which is like carpet and blue groove, the speeds keep going up and up and up, and it becomes harder because the air window becomes smaller. Uh, the traction goes up, which means you can use it all. And it's really just like if you think about back in the dumb days. No, the vehicle we, can use it all, not necessarily the driver. There's a difference. Sure, but then I mean, yes. But it still becomes harder if you are overpowered and you are not skilled enough to handle that overpowered. Then yes, well, we're talking about everybody out of the A main, right? I mean, let's talk no, about. No, I'm you talking about driving, yeah. You know, only, only ten of them are good enough to be good enough, and then the rest. So then don't then don't make your car that fast until you're very good. degrees. Right. Then, then slow your car down until you can handle it. The, the, the tires aren't, they don't come with a gear ratio that you opinion you're stuck on the motor. They don't come with boost and turbo turned on in the speed control. They don't all come with 4.5 turn motors. They don't all come with high voltage lipos. You can draw, you can make the car, you have more adjustment now than you've ever been able to do to make the car go as fast as you want it to go or as slow as you want it to go. If you are running a five minute race and every other race you're tagging the chicane and blowing the car up because it's too fast, then your car's too fast. It's not a problem with, with, with the hobby being too fast. That's a problem with you not building well, a car for your skill level. It, it is a problem only because people don't want to be slow. And that's the whole, the and, here, and here we go again. I know, yeah, I know. You're right. I agree with your statement, but I don't agree with, with, with the people on that one. I don't want to be the slow guy out there. Yeah, but we all were. And many of us still are, and that's okay. If right. you think you got to go out with a 3.5 and an HV lipo to to impress everyone as you pile into the wall in the G main, then that's your problem. That's not the hobby's problem, or the lipo's problem, or the or the brushless motor's problem. You you build a car to to oh. handle. Oh, that's not good. You build a car uh, within <laughs> your scale. I don't know how to stop my phone from ringing. All right, well we're gonna listen to that for a bit. Uh. uh <laughs> who, um, doesn't, who doesn't know how to stop? It's Wes. Phone, it's right? Wes. He probably wants money for that intro. <laughs> yeah, Wes, I'm not paying you. Suck it. So listen, I'll I'll, 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 I'll I'll back it up a little bit because I think you 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 brought some points up. Uh, there's two there's two conversations with too fast. There's the basher end of it, and then there's the racer end of it. Let's let me touch upon the well, basher end of it. First. Listen, you're though I make your a joke is that you um, racer you only care about the aiming. You have to remember no, it, the conversation is. It's bringing new people in that suck. That's yeah, the idea. so I already said that. Them. Right. You want to suck them in and go better. So I would give them a speech. I would give them a speech. You suck. 
don't buy the high voltage batteries and don't buy the 3.5 motor. If you're if you're if you're stuck in open class, which is not even the case, you can choose a different class. But let's say the track you race at only has open. That's fine. I would still give the advice. I I, I did it at my last track that I was just at. I went up to a guy. Listen, you're a little bit too fast. Like turn turn these down, slow it down, and gave him some tips. The guy went two laps faster after that. The the the, the impression that the idea that you have to run anything available to create speed in your race car, no matter what your skill level is, is ridiculous. You, you you set your car up for your skill level. And what you'll notice is week after week, you'll be able to go a little bit faster. You throw another two degrees of turbo in or another, a little bit more boost in, or you might go up a tooth on the pinning gear. Or you might drop a turn on the motor, or you might ch- ch- turn your endpoint adjustment up a little bit more. There's, there's so many ways to see. EPA is a good fast, uh, I, I'm gonna turn my EPA up. I'm gonna do that now. <laughs> The point is, is it's easy to slow the car down. It's easy to to make a race car within your skill set. And again, I'm not always talking about A-Main guys. Some of my examples are A-Main guys because that's really where you can figure, hash out what's going on at, at the high level of technology and, and what not in the hobby. But in the lower mains, you shouldn't be going as fast as the guys are in the A-Main. You should be running your 10.5 or your 13.5 uh in 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 this in the lower mains while the the faster guys are running their eight fives and 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 seven fives and six fives this 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 idea that you have to run everything so it's ballistic so the car yeah if everyone had to run the ballistic motors so the cars are blown up then i would totally agree with you but they don't and they shouldn't be you build a car to your skill set that that's my racer conversation i i care just as much about the g main as the a main the g main guy needs to build I know, speed but now there's also a, the opposite component to this because I've also had seen beginner guys at the track who are running so slow that they can't even clear the double. They're casing the double over and over it, or they have to 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 go way way, way wide on the turn and 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 really get a run up to clear. That's equally as difficult to drive as an overpowered car. So the point is, if you are one of these slower people, talk to the fast guys. They're not going to be all snobby to you. They'll they'll give you some tips on how to build your car right for your skill set. Yeah, it's the hobby's not too fast. The hobby's fast. It's great. It's awesome. I love these fast cars. But if I if I, if if you can't handle it, don't drive it that fast. And then so that's the racer end, and we can talk more about that. The basher end, it's great. It's awesome. You got nothing but big open space and and basher areas. You can and and it's creating entire new segments, getting people into to 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 buy these eighty mile an hour cars out of the box and then soup them up until they go one hundred or one hundred ten miles an hour. It's creating lots of buzz, lots of new products, lots of new customers, lots of new yeah, money. We got a new fan today. We say that again. We got a new fan today. That's the hot release. Oh, a new fan. <laughs> you meant like a cut, like a like a new fan. Late breaking news in RC. Yeah, so, so I, I don't think the hobby's overpowered. I don't think the, the hobby's too fast. I think uh, you you need to realize back in the day. They would walk in the hobby shop and say, give me the fastest motor. And you sold them a Trinity Triad 9 turn or something, which was pretty quick, um, but nothing by today's standards. Now, when they come in the store and say, give me the fastest motor, we're like, hang on, Hot Rod. You you, you don't want the fastest motor. It, it, here's, here's, and we have a discussion about it. All this is doing is it's just forcing a discussion. This, this idea that you have to put the fastest of everything in is, is silly. Pete, that's you want to that was one breath. What? I said, do you want to say something? Because that was, yeah, exactly. Huh? I think Pete fell asleep halfway through your uh, rant. I still think everything's too fast, especially in racing. But that's traction to me. I hate, even though I think it'd be fun, I hate carpet off road racing. And I've never done it. <laughs> yeah. The, the, right. The problem with carpet off road racing is not that it's too fast. You, you're just a prob- you're probably the, a little bit of an elitist on, on on the old dirt stuff, which is fine. I I, I like dirt as well. But again, the the, you, the the idea that you have to run th- at those intense speeds is ridiculous. If if you can handle it, it's fun. It's super fun. I I I like to think I'm a pretty decent driver. I love when my car goes ballistic. I think that's awesome. And if I make a mistake, the repercussions are big and bad. And if I don't want those repercussions to happen, then I can slow the car down. But uh, the speed is awesome. It's great. You just make sure you're ready for it. I think that I don't think ready to run too fast. Uh, as far as racing goes, anyone who's smart and wants to have fun and hopefully win, I think will realize if the car is too fast for them and they'll either just use less trigger or yeah, they'll, they'll do things to make the car more manageable. I know for me, when it comes to speed, like anything I have, like if it can 
take a 4S battery, I probably run it mostly on 3S because that's more fun. If I can take 6S, I'll probably run it on 4S most of the time just because it's not mental. Um, there's times where I'd, I'd like to have that full absolute peak power capability when you've got plenty of room and you do a massive, you know, wheelies across the park. That's cool. But if you have to actually like turn and get around things and stand a little bit of a course, usually less power for me is more fun. Um, so uh, I'll limit it myself. And there's also, uh, you know, for cars that will do 70, 80, even 100, like the X01, they're more expensive. And it's not like uh, the uh, kid is like, well, should I get a Bandit or an X01, you know, or the Arma? Right. You know, so that that's also a bit, a bit of a built-in limiter. Or it's the parent who's like, whoa, this thing goes 70 miles an hour, impressive, but that sounds like too much for us, Junior, and they get something that does, you know, 30 miles an hour. So I don't think it's a big problem. And I think certainly uh, in America, you know, this is the land of the Second Amendment. If you can have any kind of a gun you want, you should definitely have any kind of an RC car you want. Yeah, so, and, and, and you touched upon it. You touched upon it, but but in the store, we'll often recommend like if the guy's buying a, a rustler that goes seventy miles an hour on the box. First of all, it's very difficult to get it to go that seventy miles an hour, the advertised number. But they'll ask, you know, should I buy a three S lipo? We usually re say a, a car that uses either a two or a three S. We would recommend. Listen, you're going to daily drive this thing on two S. But when you want to impress the ladies, yeah, you might yeah. want to have yeah. a three S to to throw in once in a while. But you're not going to enjoy necessarily going at those intense speed you, it's 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 less fun yeah. it's scary yeah. and, and they and they're so I like, um, you can have the best of both worlds yeah i think what horizon does with the uh 50 and 100 percent throttle switch where you can switch it or i think it's full throttle 75 and 50 but it's it's they've got three positions that you can choose so you can yeah. put it, you can put the biggest battery in there but then knock knock it down to 75 percent. so it feels like you're driving on 2s but the 3s is in there you can put it into turbo and uh, that works. Of course, tracks is training mode. That works great. Yeah, there's just so many options to slow the car down now that it's it's not yeah. really a, a, a problem. If the cars only had a toggle switch and they weren't, uh, that's uh, a cool reading directions. I, I don't. I wouldn't read directions, but um, the directions are stupid. I, I will say that we've been very lucky as an industry because the cars do go very fast. They're heavy. Mass times. I mean, the uh, cars aren't RC10 size anymore. You know, the short course right. trucks. They're as big as an scale buggy. Mass times velocity, at least a car hits you at 30, that's like, you know, a, a literal ton of force hitting you if it's going fast enough and hits you square. Right. So we, I think we've been very lucky in that regard. I mean, people have been killed by radio control helicopters. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, fingers crossed, we won't see any, any, any of that kind of stuff. And we'll talk safety when we talk about lipos too. But yeah, I mean, these things are fast. They say not a toy on the box for a reason. So let's all be, you know, uh, safe with our RC cars. Don't drive it through your legs at 75 miles an hour, you know. Um, <laughs> or at least get a video. The guy right? that needs to hear that should <laughs> drive the car through his legs at 75 miles an hour. I think yeah. everybody should do that at this point and then send the video to us. Yeah. But, I mean, if you see an RC car, even an RC car going 40, you can feel that that's a lot of mass and energy. And people tend to take a step back and respect that when they see that kind of thing in action. Yeah. And this I is not a dangerous sport to compared to other. Buggy. I have a dent in my shin from corner marshaling an A-scale buggy that decided to punch it when I went to pick it up, and it cut me, and I have a divot in my shin from that son of a – I threw that car See, across the track. They should have had reverse. If they had reverse, that would have – they had reverse, he would have backed yeah. out of that thing. I've been arguing for reverse this whole time, yeah. 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 Okay. One more quick thing on safety. It blows my mind. And this used to blow my mind when I would uh, you know, actually go to race tracks and race. But I would see guys with their backs to a double, eight scale buggies jumping temple high. And I would tell the rate, I'm like oh, the rate track opera, like, dude, hey, you got to tell those guys to get on the other side of the double. And, and they're like, kind of like, oh, screw you, safety dude. I'm like, You're, they could get killed. <laughs> you know? yeah. Why would you not want to like have a little bit of safety? But what do I know? No, that would be reversed. But um, see how that went that way? So. <laughs> I was going to give a story about the two reviews that we're doing in the next issue about uh, the speed. I did the Wendigo review and the 3S on that is just stupidly too fast because the chassis can't handle it. It can't yeah. go straight. It leans too much. It's not, it's, it's honestly, yep. it's not really that fun. Uh, what car are you talking about? The Rock Racer Wendigo. Oh, Red right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I tested it with the 3S and uh, it, it, it's, it's too fast for its own good because the chassis can't handle that. Yeah, it's, it's like rock, it's a rock crawler that now goes thirty five, and it just yeah over like this. And but to make to, funny, to, to, to talk to bring back a point, what did you do? Did you give up on the hobby? This is too fast, and throw it in the garbage, or did you address it and slow it down? No, I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. What else? Should have asked that. It is a whole thing. I mean, there's it's like LS swapping a mail truck. You know, you can't use it, but in a straight line, you can. And 
yeah. you do donuts, I guess. So my reference in the article was a demon engine and a Suzuki samurai, but yeah. similar thing. If it's um, fun for you, then great. But no, but you, you can't you can't take a trail truck or a, a rock race like that and hustle it around a tight, you know, a twisty turny course with speed. It's just you might have the power to, but the, the chassis won't do it. Yeah, but but you can throw some roost and go in a straight line. So yeah, if people like it, great. if you go straight, that's the thing about the thing. It just doesn't go straight. Um, go jack, put a jack away. Well, the, yes, I See, agree. We can go full circle on this entire conversation. Uh, so I know I'm talking about my Rio. It's one of the things that needs it because you want a rock racer, a rock crawler to go fast. And now you go fast and you're like, oh, this chassis can handle it. Well, that's yeah. Yeah. great. Not to mention the fact that the drivetrain is spinning at a bazillion miles an hour because it's geared to go two. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Got here late, by the way. You're fired. Um, <laughs> Travis comes on every week and asks him what our drinks. What's up, Travis? <laughs> hey, uh, quick shout out to Travis. He makes some really incredible uh, American flag uh, yes. sculptures. Yes. But it's like a graphic. Hand carved. He hand carves those stars. Yeah. Well, with a Dremel or something, but yeah. unbelievable. Very, very skilled. Yeah. Hey, you got to make them uh, into um, cornhole. I don't know if you do that already. Cornhole? Bag toss. I don't know what you call it. You have games in Canada? No. It's just called like cornhole. Play with the moose or something. Moose ball. Cornhole balls. reference to something else? Yeah, you throw corn in a hole. That's why it's called that. Yeah, well, I thought it, it was. It's, it's also in the circle of your uh, anus shorts, but yeah. That's what I thought. That's what I thought it would. That's cornhole. Yes. Double, double entendre. Uh, oh, oh, awkward pause. We're going to. Uh, <laughs> One of the reasons why our shit's too fast now, I need to swear every once in a while, we'll keep this PG-13. Uh, Did you how, swear? Yes, shit. Uh, fireballs uh, power RC cars now. How well, well, we, to, to word how it differently, get to using why did the hobby, why did the, why did the industry choose LiPo-wise? I, I mean, lithium I mean. obviously is, is winning, is the winning uh, chemistry, but why did the industry not get together and say, let's, Let's slow this down a tiny bit and go with lithium ion or lithium ferrite or, or one of the other lithium options. Well, see, this, first. This, yeah, this. Well, I don't know. I don't know about that. Well, I what did you say? Pete? I didn't hear. I said lipo came first. Oh, then, so this is okay. Yeah, but if I remember correctly, because Derek, you and I were at uh, was it the one and only year in Vegas where they had the trade show? Well, you would have been there too, Pete. It was the life and, and cells that they were using in electric cars. Uh, there yeah, but was the one, lipos didn't. Li by the time lipos made it into actual racing, I think there was other chemistries, other lithium chemistries available. Because because lipo was around for quite. I think we saw it in like two thousand and two yeah. or two thousand one. Li lipo was was definitely gaining steam for RC cars. In fact, when A one two three came out, the first LIP cell to really make an impact. Their whole pitch was, unlike lithium polymer, we won't catch on fire. All this stuff, you can put a nail through it, nothing will happen. That that's they were already uh, marketing themselves as a reaction to lipo and uh, and having a so unique difference to lipo. Are you implying we were we were already balls deep into into lipo and, and there was no turning back by the time the other we options? We were at the tip at that point. Not, or, um, yeah, but, yeah, that's what I was. So, so there was still a chance. It was already on the way. And keep in mind, A one two three is this massive company, and you know RC was a tiny bit. So if you're an RC car manufacturer and you're like, and I'm just theorizing right here, you're like, well. I can go with lipo technology, which is not rolled steel cylinders. It's goop in packets. I imagine that's cheaper to make. There's a bunch of companies already making these things in China. I can probably get a much better margin. And customer-wise, the LE Lifey cells have uh, lower C ratings and lower power density. There's no performance advantage. It's strictly safety, which is not sexy. So I don't think there were enough <laughs> reasons to, to junk the lipo stuff that maybe they're already working on or about to do. Uh, to say, hey, I've got a more expensive product that I have to educate you about and tell you why less power is good, et cetera, all that jazz. Yeah. And granted, and also, it, 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 too, but also lithium polymers uh, weren't so prevalent that everyone was worried about. It was still a thing you were, you were probably running nickel metal hydride cells and, and hearing about lipo and thinking about it. And uh, there was ample time for the technology to catch up a little bit where you've got a lipo-specific charger. You don't have to be an engineer to figure it out and understand how to set CC charging and stuff. You, you just plug it in and it knows it's a LiPo or are you telling it's a LiPo or it's for only for LiPos. So that takes that away. And you know, LiPo is super safe. If you use the LiPo mode or a smart charger, what and makes it safer to charge it the wrong way. Or if you damage it, if you poke it, you know, uh, harm it, then yeah, you've got a problem, but it's like Santa rocket safe, but, uh, no, but, no, but even that's good. Even that's getting better. Like, like uh, only good until it doesn't blow up or opposite. It does blow up. 
That is not safe. If the argument is lifey safer, it absolutely is. But we're never going to go to lifey. Battery. Well, not at this point. But at no, a, no, no. Of course not a, now. At right. a critical point, we chose uh, small package bombs over. I mean, you can't yeah. even airmail these things anymore. Sure. I, I don't think I'll let my house burn down for a little bit more voltage. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know if you saw my slideshow that I just did, but we were talking about how, how good of a choice it was. No, we, it was all the all the fire things, which happened. But we didn't now. choose. You you can buy a lifey pack right now if you want to, but the market says no. We don't want that. We want lipos. You know that most people buy lipos because they want them, not because there's no lifey option. Because the industry chose only lipo. Hey, we we might have to have Tebow on one week. I think that might be fun. Huh? He, he he made a, a pretty funny and uh, relevant comment there. Are you having like a side conversation? I don't know about right now because all I can read is boost uh, knuckle. The live comments. Omar Omar is Tebow. Oh, com- I thought you were Jared Tebow. Uh, whatever his name. Oh well, we should have Tebow on as well. Yeah, sure. Maybe we can have both Tebows on at the same time. How is Omar a Tebow that's not Jared Tebow? What? What's a Tebow? Yeah, the O. It's the first guy that I hated. He had character. an alias when he would, but when he was insulting me, he had a different name. Now that we're good buddies, he's coming out with his real name. So he was watching on YouTube. I think it's a different name. I know. Obviously, I'm joking. It's not obvious. Stupid. Um, <laughs> You're angry today. I love it. I haven't seen angry Derek in a while. We well. chose. We chose. <laughs> and there was a pivotal time in RC that uh, life he could have helped because a we were trying to slow shit down let's shit it again um we were trying to slow things down and and lipo was more dangerous and if we had chose that at the current like progression of speed it would have made zero difference in your 100 mile an hour car and it wouldn't i mean i'm still scared to be honest with you to have these batteries in my garage no, but to imply that if we went with lifey for 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 the main ca- lithium chemistry for the the hobby doesn't mean that lipo wouldn't exist. We could use lifey for ninety percent of the industry, and then someone who wants the one hundred and fifty mile an hour car could still buy lipos. Sure. It, it, it's not an all or nothing conversation. We we could do a hybrid. Hybrids are almost the best in almost every conversation. We could have had a hybrid situation where the the, the organized racing was was lithium ferrite or lithium ion, and then if you want to. Go crazy! Of course, you can buy lithium polymer. And, and well, Adam made a point. I don't think that's true anymore. That the, Japan at one point did have a lifey uh, class. I don't know if they all race that, but they did make a somewhat effort to not try to burn everything down. Uh, it's become less problematic now. The cells are a little bit more stable, but I, I'm telling you, it's still somewhat of a scary proposition, especially when you start going up in in cells. And, you know, and I, I saw I saw a show. Battery to me is frightening. I, I was like, you, yeah, I don't really want it near me. Well, if you if, if, let's say that we go back in time, um, and uh, lifey is first, and it catches on, the industry goes lifey. That's all there is. And now lipo was invented literally a year ago. Lipos finally appear. We'd all be running them right now because people would say, "Hey, oh, hey." Not lipo? if the governing not if the governing body stopped it. Not not if no, not if the governing body was... smothering body. It, no, no, I already said, hang on a second. I already said if you want to go 150 miles an hour, I'm not saying you can't buy them. But if the industry as a whole decided, we're listen, you can't bring your lipo to the racetrack. You can't bring it to the to the park. Would affect it well, that day would be able to racing do that, does not control anything about the kid who wants to go run faster, longer with his car. And for that, but person, I think I, I think I already spoke to that. Then you can still buy light bulbs, but if if, if no, as an industry, we, we, we kind of hypothetical here. Lifey comes first. There's no lipo option. Just that's oh, this is the better way. The nickel metal hydride lifey is the standard battery. And then someone a year ago it comes and says, "Hey, I came up with lipos. Lifey is 15 C. Lipo is 30 C. You have more punch, and also uh, it's lighter, and you get more power density. Everyone would use it. They, they would use. They would go to it. You, we would be transferring to lipo right wow. now. No, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know if I, I agree with that because we've we've frozen lifey at 15 years ago in development, and I guarantee now 15 sure. years later we'd have the same power. No, we haven't frozen lifey. Well. Lifey is used. Now, the RC industry is not like where battery technology comes from. I mean, lifeys are used outside no, the obviously. RC industry. Yeah, of course. Uh, so any whatever technology has advanced in lifey, it's available now for radio control car users as well. Just people want the greater power density of a lipo. And the but hang on, this is a conversation that happens right now, to, like in, in this day and age, when when a mom and a, a or a dad and, and a kid is buying a vehicle, is, is we have this discussion at the hobby shop all the time. Here's here's your nickel metal hydride, and here's your your lithium polymer option, and here's the advantages and disadvantages to each. If you're gonna keep on top of your battery and you want the maximum power and you and you are aware of the, the extra risks, then you can go lipo. But if, if you're going to bring your vehicle home and throw it in the corner for three months and not touch it and you don't want to have to balance or, or storage charge it, 
and, and if you don't want any concerns of fire, then nickel metal hydride is the answer. We could have we could be having that exact same conversation between Lifey and Lipo still. You can still there's room for both as well. Uh, Lifey would still be a very viable if the racing end of it embraced it, and if and if and we had an actual conversation about the safety. Again, I'm not trying to make rules that you can't buy lipos, but if we were to have that conversation, a lot of people would happily choose Lifey over lipo. I mean, they would. Well, and that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're allowed to disagree. Dead air. Fine, we'll disagree then. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're no, I, was just, <laughs> I was just reading some of the comments. I don't remember uh, Novak trying lithium ion, but lithium ion couldn't supply any amps. No, so, Novak did nickel metal hydride. Um, uh, Novak had matched nickel metal hydride packs for a while. They yeah, didn't yeah. Do it with Adam post, uh, he posted that uh, I don't remember. That's what I was trying to remember. I, that, I don't think they try. Lithium ion doesn't provide amp draw, so the, we, we, we have really? small cars. There's the no Horizon vehicles really? that use lithium ion now. Those the like a, like the A one two three type round cells. Um, a huge pain for the hobby shops, but uh, some of the industry maybe it, it is even sort of trying to the, the entry level well, industry is sort of trying to transition. Well, Arma tried that, or maybe it was Arma. Yeah, well, Horizon, right? right. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, Arma maybe it was right planes at the time. I don't remember. Arma's competitor, you know, with a two hundred dollar price point. I mean, they're a little less. But they had uh, 18 650 cells, so it looks like a, a extra long like C battery. Yeah, you know, that's what powers Teslas, I believe. Yeah, so you'd you'd put two in the car, and that would give you um, I can't remember the voltages, but like seven point I think it was seven point two volts. And then you could put more batteries in the car, but it would increase your capacity, not your voltage. So the car always ran at seven point two volts, but you could have extra capacity right. putting more cells in. Um, yeah. But yeah, it just didn't catch on. But that that car, those cars didn't catch on. Wasn't, you could also put a lipo or nickel metal in there. But those oh, I didn't know that. No, no, no. They, they had, there was one vehicle, and maybe it wasn't the armor. There was one vehicle where it only fit those cells, uh, if I remember correctly. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Well, I mean, you're just pigeonholing yourself into something that's not going to work. Here's one battery and no options. Um, but right. I, certainly, if someone came in with a battery tomorrow that's as light as a LiPo, same voltage, but there's no storage charge issues, and you can drive a nail through it or abuse it, and nothing will happen. You know, then oh, that'd be huge for sure. But I think for now, yeah. So, so I, I was trying. I was trying to tell this story earlier. I, I, I'm not an expert at this, but I did see a show uh, outside of the industry on, on lithium polymer, and and my understanding is is the fire happens when That's two of the chemicals right. come in contact with each other. Like you said, if you pierce it, it's, I guess yeah. the chemicals touch or something. And that's what causes the fire. And they now have, uh, well, th th this is I saw this about a year ago. The technology now is it's more of a gel, and the, the guy was just cutting. He was cutting up. He, was, he had a light bulb selling. He was cutting pieces off of it. Well, yeah. it was still plugged into a light bulb, but the light bulb was still going as he was cutting mm -hmm. pieces. So the argument is just like any technology. I'm sure they're working on it. Or they, this is this yeah. is going to, there will be a time where we can drill a screw or a drill bit through a, a light bulb battery and it won't catch fire. I, I'm yeah, sure that's all, sure. that's all I'm looking forward to in life. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the next time I build a car, I want to install the battery. Well, not the ability to drill, but the, the lack of fear of burning your house down would be nice. Yeah, the, the way batteries should be installed in cars is you just fire a deck screw through it into the chassis. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no girl is for, is for wussies, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. When we used to so, tape stuff in, we should have just drilled it right in. As, as far as I've heard, I've never heard of a LiPo going nuclear just because someone charged it. You charge it on the, on the nickel hydride setting. That's what happens. Yeah, well, that's right. Or... or Back in but the day. why it happened doesn't matter as you're watching your house smoke. No, 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 no. The, the point I'm making, it's not like the technology is as this random blow up factor. You either have no, to bury the battery. Like, here's what would happen when, when LiPo first started appearing. Remember this in the airplane days? Guys would fly their LiPo powered plane, they would crash the plane, they would put the plane in their trunk. Meanwhile, the battery has been ruptured because it fell from freaking, you know, 1800 feet. And, and then it goes up in a fireball. But that's because the battery is ruptured. Or they charge on nickel metal hydride mode, the battery goes up. If you have a battery that's you know together and it's not swollen or damaged or otherwise leaking, you, you don't dead short it. You charge on the right setting. These things are almost never going to go go bad. Yeah. I'm not saying don't worry. Well, the about point it, is, is people yeah. do keep their swollen batteries because they don't want to buy another hundred dollar battery, and they do keep their damaged batteries that they when they when they lawn dart the car into the ground, they they do keep running that. We no, have customers yeah. all the time where they walk in the store and we're like, dude, get leave with that. I don't don't no, bring that I in here. That. The point I'm making is there are people who are like. Man, you never know. No matter what, a light bulb could just go off. Like, no, it can't. It, it won't happen. <laughs> right. That point is sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You make a good point. If everyone follows the rules, it's not that scary. But yeah. not everyone follows the rules. Sort of my rock. The idiot beside you, 
at the at the track may not be following the yeah. rules. And, and I, I've taken out. batteries. I, I took I ruined a battery for to get photos of and to build a discharger. But I put a, a lipo on a bulb and just let it go to zero. Of course, it all ballooned up. Nothing vented. Nothing caught on fire. Left to hook it up to a light bulb. You know, for a week to go to absolute zero. Cut the leads off. Twisted the wires together. You know. I'm not saying I mean, takes a swollen battery seriously. I would get rid of it, but it's not like oh my god, the swollen battery is now like literally yeah, a grenade right. that's about to go off. You know, people get yeah, usually right. usually yeah. the big fires are you're on a charger and it's uh, out of balance and one cell's dead. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. more of a, a charging issue. I, I I mean, the blowing up stuff is if yeah. you crash and it's half charged and it has power, but I mean, it's still kind of scary to yeah. me. We, we, like, we yeah. actually have three customers who burnt their houses down. Like we like. Like Hobby Hobby is a, a, a small store, but a huge, huge shop. Like, like, like you're telling well, Don't uh, leave. Allegedly. When you get a battery charging, don't leave. Stay there. That, that's right. The, the best thing. advice is be present. That's right. Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. But I'll the point is, by, is by one three customers story, that. Hang on, let like me finish this story up. About a battery blown up because uh, me and Carl, you know, with the thumbs, Carl thumbs, him in. <laughs> uh, we were raising an OCRC and we went to go uh, eat and drink during the break. And uh, so we're out drinking beer, and we get a call, and they're like, uh, "Hey, Carl, your uh, car burned down." <laughs> wow. So, uh, we weren't even you near the why? charger, so huh? But why? Like uh, charger malfunction? It didn't shut back off. Back in the day, all these auto detection chargers, where it's like, "Oh, I'll pick the cell. We're going to charge that." Could change the profile of one. It, there was a huge problem when like light bulbs came out with chargers. I mean, they caused a little fire at the track, and uh, nobody we weren't there to do it, and he missed his main, but. Uh, you know, we were eating and drinking, so it was worth it. That's why, uh, if you could stick a screw through it. So, uh, so Carl was like, "I can't believe I missed my main." Was that his main takeaway? Uh, we, to be honest, when we all raced, we really never like we were in Vegas. We never made the mains. We were just, it was a waste of time, but it was fun. Hey, real quick on on lipos too. Uh, just you guys can tell me I'm wrong if you think I'm wrong, but I know I'm not wrong. Uh, putting the battery in salt water is not a thing. Don't don't do that. Well, according to some of the big manufacturers, it is. It is. Oh. What do you mean? Well, I, did, I, did an article, I did an article with Thunder Power, and, and, and that's what they said. Discharge it all the way and put it in, in the water. You'll actually see the negative terminal bubble as it's, as it's completing the discharge. Why would you charge a battery all the way to try to kill it? Discharge. You discharge it all the way, oh, and then you right, put right. it in. What happens is, if the, so just so if you're not familiar with this, the idea is you dissolve as much salt into water as you can until it literally can't hold any more salt. The salt stops, stops dissolving. Then you put your battery in there and the salt, the battery will discharge in the salt water, which it does. It will very slowly discharge. However, um, you will erode the terminals before the thing actually completely discharges. And it's not like you can't just discharge a battery by putting it on a load like a single 1157 right. tailwind bulb. It does the same thing. Um, but also that original uh, prescription of putting in salt water, the idea was that you would rupture the cells to expose the chemicals to the salt water to make it inert. It wasn't just to discharge the battery. So you can put batteries in salt water if you want, but you don't have to do that to render right. a lipo cell inert. You, you you discharge it. You put it on a sink on a load. I use a single 1157 tail light bulb like the old days, but just one of them, which is about a two amp load. You leave it on there for 24 hours. The bulb goes, you just leave it. It's totally dead. You cut the leads off. You twist the wires together. The voltage will never come back up because it's now dead shorted. And now you can just recycle it. Right. You don't have to put it in salt water. You can if you want to, but that's not a must have or the only way to do it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Right. What if you use like uh, uh, like Muldoon salt or kosher salt? Mm. Well, what you want to do then first, Derek, is you want to brush some butter on it. Yeah. And then you uh, it so thinking, that's obvious. I, I don't know why you would even ask. <laughs> I just didn't know if it mattered what kind of salt. Just throw in the ocean. That's how you recycle lipos. <laughs> that's how you recycle anything. We throw everything else in the ocean we're done with. Why not, right? Flush it down and send the lipo with it. It'll clear out your yeah. toilet line, too. Yeah. You know what? There's, there's nothing like organizing sea turtles into six packs with those rings. Super helpful. <laughs> they were, uh, you know. Oh, poor sea uh, turtles. I don't even know what to say right now. I think I'm blushing. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Yeah. It's funny, but I, we love the turtles. You want to keep the family sea lions together? Fishing net. Works every time. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, so back to reverse. Uh, it really saves lives. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in divots and in, in shins. As you well. want to see the divot? Yeah, I do. I'll show you my Oakley shorts if you show me your divot. Nice leg. Right here. 
I can't. I bled, see I bled uh, it was a hot rod hobby, and I still remember this day. I bled for like three hours from that thing, too. Mm-hmm. I think there's a chip out of my shin. So reverse would have saved that because I would not have had to go Marshall. Yeah, yeah. Crash. Yeah, and, and I know a guy who never wears a seatbelt because he knew a guy that drove off a bridge into the water, and if he had a seatbelt on, he would have died. So oh. your 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 uh, anecdote. Three hooses. Well, you put three hooses down. No, this is this is my buddy. He actually used to work at at, uh, at Hobby Hobby. He's a this guy's awesome, David. I, I, I don't, don't know, know if he's joking talking or if he thought I that. meant that the same one guy burned down all three of his houses, or I don't know. I don't know what. <laughs> oh, what a coincidence! Yeah, I think he know, he knows the stories. The upshot, guys, um, of lipos is if you need to, like, you know, uh, fake an insurance claim, there you go. You know, just <laughs> allegedly. Instead of a nickel yeah. metal hydride, oh, what happened? I don't know. If any I'm of gonna, us ever make an insurance claim, they're going to find this video. I'm going to have to put a disclaimer <laughs> out that since my company's actually named Beer Theater Media does not endorse or recommend putting <laughs> your car down or house with lipos, and that's just alleged that you should do that. Yeah. And if you guys need to get rid of a body, just call me after the show. Yeah. Bury it. Uh, what, like sand bottom. You bury a pet over it and standing up. You watch too many murder shows. Uh, so we're gonna start a GoFundMe for Jeff's hats because uh, they're getting a little. I have a new hat coming. I have a new hat coming. It, it, I ordered from Amazon. I hope it fits. I would. Ha- it's coming tomorrow. I would have worn it tonight for everyone. Blue. I would have. Uh, well, we'll save it for the next show. It's gonna be even mm-hmm. better than getting free teak and stuff. You know. What everyone come back and check out my hat. Jeff's gonna wear, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeff, and it, you know what? And if this keeps going, which it, for some stupid reason it seems like it is, <laughs> then uh, I might, uh, I might, uh, maybe I'll get a new hat every week. Maybe this will be a fun, Jeff. Yeah. If you literally had a hat that cost a friend a hundred dollars to make and send to you, would you wear it? <laughs> no, depends Actually, on as good of a friend cost. as Derek is of mine, yeah, just shows just the shipping <laughs> cost. Derek's still one of my best friends, so I I don't care that much about him. I don't have to. I don't have to. That's him really anymore. for Derek to say, not you. No, no, I, I don't care if he likes me. I'm just yeah. <laughs> Can I tell a quick story that Jeff got banned and kicked out of uh, Rosemead, no. Chicago? What did I get banned from? Oh, the yeah. hotel. Yeah, the hotel. Yeah, from the from the city. You got kicked out of well, the city. Well, yeah, it ended that way. <laughs> Wes yeah. as well. Wes was there. Yeah. 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 So just a quick story. Tell, no, we're not going to tell that story. And uh, we used to probably uh, drink uh, some beers. And uh, the you hotel that had an atrium, so the whole open thing. And Jeff at night, who was drunk, thought it was a good idea to throw plants down seven stories into the center. And you the cops, started the plant throwing the year before in Chicago, when when we when we stole the bus. Oh, and yeah. you were throwing plants at the bus. We so did uh, our own r- uh, plant riot, yeah, but. This one, he threw plants, and then uh, he got a police raid at his room at 3 in the morning and then kicked him out of the city, <laughs> which was awkward for the trade show. Yeah. <laughs> I had to pack everything up. <laughs> so and We had to leave the city and then get into another cab to come back into the city and, and get go to the, what, the double tree across the street? Yeah, that like was an expensive hotel, hotel night for me. So that's uh, And that's how we're going to end it. Uh, we throw plants and uh, kill turtles. Hey guys, the show's over, but uh, let me explain what keeps this show going. It's not the terrible quality or the 38 cents. We're actually a magazine you download. And here's a quick video showing you how to do it. It's pretty simple. You get an email, click download. This is on an iPad, so the example's for an iPad, but it's pretty simple and the same steps apply for every tablet. Just download it to your tablet, comes on there, make it a library, put it on your iBooks or whatever PDF viewer you like, And then you have full access to all our back issues with flippable pages, links that direct you to an ad if you are interested in the high-tech servo or the uh, new associated drag car. You just click their links and it brings you right to their website. It's just like a magazine, but on your phone. So you read it in the bathroom, just like good old times, but now it's digital. So remember to wipe your phone down because that's gross. Support us, subscribe, do whatever you need to do. And that's two beers. That's why we ended. That's it's good timing.